Good morning and thank you for joining the Aura Gold Investor Webinar. My name is Jane Morgan and today I am joined by Aura's CEO, Alex Passmore. Today we're running through a company update regarding the recently announced Crown Prince Mineral Resource Estimate, along with engaging in a Q&A session. So to ask a question throughout today's presentation, please use the Q&A function, which can be found at the bottom of your screen. Alex, I hand over to you. Good morning, Jane, and welcome all, and thank you for attending the, uh, the Oracle Investor presentation webinar. Um, we will get cracking. So, use the disclaimer. So, Oracle is an advanced uh, explorer in the Murchison, uh, Murchison region of Western Australia. Our, uh, our flagship project is the, is the Garden Gully Gold Project, which is the north of Mexicara. And, and Garden Gully Gold Project sits in the Abbott's Greenstone Belt, which is a significant yet yeah, underexplored Greenstone Belt in this area. The, uh, the, the project sits in an area that's uh, surrounded by producing and past producing mines uh, and, and is, sits on a branch of mining lease. So it's, it's really well located in terms of in terms of the Murchison Gold region. We've recently updated our mineral resource estimate at the Crown Prince Prospect. Now, Crown Prince is one of the most advanced prospects that we have that sits within the Garden Gully Gold project. So we we put out a resource on Monday this week, uh, 240,000 ounces of 4.1 grams. Now, importantly, this includes the southeastern zone, which is a new discovery uh, at Crown Prince. So the southeastern zone, the 164,000 ounces, 5.2 grams. And these ore bodies, these gold loads, start from surface uh, and, and are very much an open pitable type prospects. So we look forward to further drilling and, and, and wrapping some economics around, around these ore bodies. <clears throat> they, they do sit on the ground mining list, uh, which, you know, which also speeds things up. There's plenty of upside from here. So uh, we, we're, we're currently drilling on site and we, we're chasing loads that sit parallel to the southeastern zone. Uh, which will contribute to any, you know, open pit mining inventory. So the Crown Prince uh, prospect, uh, uh, you know, is very much an advanced prospect, and and, and any ounces we add here um, will will add significantly to any any cash flow for us, and and we see them very much as cash flow ounces. So uh, so turning to the uh, vital corporate statistics of Oris, so the Oro trades on the code OAU, uh, we're at thirty seven million. Uh, as at uh, yesterday's close, cash of 4.3, so we're well funded for, for what we need to do for the short term. Experience board and management. Uh, so we we have a board that's made up of a, a combination of skill sets. So from, from uh, mining engineers, metallurgists to lawyers. So uh, plenty of experience um, stretching way back in the in the gold sector there. We're well supported by um, by our major shareholders, um, institutions and, and high net worths. So turning to the Garden Gold Gold project, uh, the Crown prospect that I was talking about earlier is, is located here on the eastern side of the belt. Uh, the, the large scale Abernathy shear zone runs up the southeastern side of the belt, uh, and gold occurrences in this belt uh, are along flows that come off the Abernathy shear zone, and Crown Prince sits on one of these flows. So that exploration model is working very well for us. We're finding new ounces uh, and also um, and also growing Crown Crown Prince resource. So the, the land package that we have in this area is 677 square kilometres, uh, which is a substantial package compared to um, compared to our peers. We're around 20 kilometres to the north of Mekitara, uh, which allows for uh, you know really efficient logistics in terms of um, supplying our exploration programs. So I'm now going to run through a uh, fly through, which is done by Verify. Um, so this uh, this will just give us a um, a little bit of context as to you know where we've been drilling, where the resource sits. Here we can see um, uh, the uh, timber packages overlaying on an aerial photo, uh, and you can see that this part of Western Australia is fairly um, is fairly uh, flat lying and, and just enclosed by by creeks. Um, we, this is our timber package here. Uh, we have uh, West Gold resources in blue, Great Boulder in green, uh, and meat very purple. Starting at the southern end of the belt, we have Odyssey Gold at the southern end, at the Q Gold operations owned by West Gold. Then the Methara Gold operations are the closest uh, operating mill to ourselves, so 1.8 million ton per annum at a CIL mill. Uh, and, uh, and, and that is 
you know, that's the that's the uh, the, the largest uh, gold mill in our area. There are several others that are on care and maintenance. Here we can see the proximity of the Palm Prince to meet Sarah. So this main uh, transport corridor here is the Great Northern Highway. Uh, and then we simply come up a, a large uh, public road, Mount Glen Road, um, perfect for haulage uh, to, to the Crown Prince Prospect. Just diving into the Crown Prince Prospect in a bit more detail, you can start to see the drilling that we've undertaken over the last 12 months. So 24,000 metres of drilling has gone into the resource over the past 12 months. And here you can see uh, drill assays uh, over a uh, one gram uh, in, in orange and red and up to 10 grams in, in red. So now to the all important resource update. So here we can see the loads uh, of Crown Prince resource. So I indicated is green, uh, blue is inferred, a uh, substantial resource, 400 metres of strike. Um, you can see that starts from surface with a with a uh, high grade laterite uh, ore body, uh, and then flowing those loads uh, down as we dip down to the southeast. Just looking at grades now, so the blocks I've coloured here are just uh, anything over like one gram, so anything that's likely to be unpitable. Uh, so you can start start to get a sense of the uh, the size of the resources and stuff we get So I turn to a little bit of uh, geology. So this this hole is uh, 469. This is a high grade yet shallow intercept from the southeastern oil body. You see here the gold touched in quartz and and um, and um, in the laterite zone. Uh, looking deeper, uh, quartz vein close uh, to gold in dolerite. And again, uh, along the strike, what we're seeing is this oxide gold, uh, you know, shallow weathered zone, and and we're drilling underneath that. So um, looking for that, looking for that piece of material. So the resource is open, uh, and that's really important. So we see um, eighty five percent of the ounces in the current resource are between surface and hundred meters below surface. So. Um, we can we we very much see growth coming from from drilling at depth, but also along the strike, uh, particularly in the southeastern area, uh, along strike from uh, along strike from what's currently being defined. What I'm showing here is the um, it is a historical working. So between 1905 and 1915, this area was mined uh, in a very small scale sense, um, but that gives us confidence about you know, the geology and the continuity of gold. So what you can see here is three levels of underground uh, development that were that were completed in that period, 1905 to 1915. Uh, and then eventually um, the mining stopped um, due to deep watering considerations. So looking at these zones now in plan, we have Northern Zone and Main Zone and, and the large Southeastern Zone. So as mentioned previously, 164,000 ounces at over five grams here. With the remainder of the ounce coming from the northern zone and main zone. And you can see some of the highlights and the high grades that have been included in this resource number. So looking at a cross section of the southeastern zone. So if we look in, if we look to the northeast and and through a through, through a cross section of the southeast zone, we can see a super journey enrichment up here. Uh, and then the low dipping down towards the southeast and good continuity at depth. So our best intercept at depth came from hole 551, which is 16 metres at almost 37 grams. Uh, and the true width of the ore body we see here is about eight or nine metres. So um, very, very um, mineable type material at those grades. So looking at the rocks themselves, so we see sheet dolerite and basalt, uh, and then the then the quartz load coming in. So a, a brown uh, alteration indicating carbonate alteration. Very, very clean metallurgy and mineralogy perspectives, uh, and then back in the right. So now we were looking at a cross section, now looking at a long section of the resource. So you can see the grade distribution here. So there, there is there's an interesting uh, intersection lineation and, and, and showing the high grade plunges, but we, we are chasing that in our current field. Uh, and, uh, and, and we expect that back to continue. So the resource, as Previously mentioned, starts from surface. Uh, it's, it really contains the main zone, the southeastern zone, the southeastern zone being a strong distributor. It's open along strike in this area, and it's also open down dip. 68% of the ounces are in the indicator category, which is important. Um, 
that shows that we have a high level of confidence uh, in the resource and in the estimate from uh, from the drilling that we've done. Uh, we're, we're aiming to keep that sort of ratio going forward. So this is a perspective diagram of, of the same resource. So you can see uh, folded uh, and tipping loads, uh, which which is to be expected for this style of deposit. Uh, we, we understand the geology well here, and, and uh, you know, and it's taken some time uh, throughout the last year to get a good handle on the geology. But we're now, uh, you know, our exploration model is working well. We're adding it up. So from here, we will drill uh, southeastern side down dip and also a long strike. And one of the key areas to watch is this zone between Crown Prince East and the southeast of body because we believe that they join up. Uh, and you know, we're, we're drilling out that that uh, drilling out that section at the moment. So we have RC drilling ongoing uh, and, and some slim RC to in the in the shallow areas. Uh, and we'll be aiming to define uh, more ounces below the 100 metre vertical depth level in key areas. Um, and, and chasing those two and, and joining those two all bodies up as as um, as was shown in the previous diagram. So looking stepping back and looking at Crown Prince and the Garden Yellow Gold project, uh, it's important to build the project to scale. So two hundred and forty thousand ounces in a three hundred by two hundred meter area is really a, a great start. But you know we we can see a lot more ounces here, uh, and so with time and drilling, uh, we, you know we see. You know, we see significant upside to the resource, uh, and, and a lot of that upside is likely to report to the existing pit um, unit that we that we see at Crown Prince. So easy, easily economic ounces. We're um, we're going through a technical program, so metallurgy, hydrogeology, geotechnical to understand things like pit wall stability and pit wall angles, uh, what the deep watering requirements are like. Uh, and, and what sort of recoveries we're likely to see. So we're very happy with all those programs kind of progressing and we don't see any red flags um, from what we from, from the work we've done so far. We'll also during the year be looking more regionally as well um, and, uh, and and looking at our 677 square kilometer package. Uh, and there are there are, there are several prospects along the Abernathy Shear Zone uh, which can add scale to, to the broader project. So just finishing on a slide that, that shows some detail on the on the mineral resource, you'll see here um, some of the grades that we um that, that we've delivered at southeastern zone. So 5.2 grams from surface in a in a shallow dipping low is certainly a really good outcome. Uh, and you can see from the graph on the right the ounce per vertical meter that we're you, you know that we're getting in this resource that we hope to add to. So it looks like the resource averages around um, 1,250 ounces per vertical metre in that small area, in that 200 by 300 metre zone, uh, with a super chain enrichment at about 30 metres below surface to well over 2,000 ounces per vertical metre. So, you know, those those sort of numbers in the area that we see, that 200 by 300 metre area, uh, would suggest that we've got a, you know, some, some very robust economics. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Alex. Uh, and once again, please use the Q&A function, which can be found at the bottom of your screen if you do have some questions for Alex. Uh, let me jump into them now. So, Alex, this has come through a few times. I mean, the stock was pretty flat off the back of the news. Do you have any comments on this? Yeah, sure. So um, we've obviously been, you know, out speaking to our supporters, brokers, et cetera, you know, since the resource. The broader market has been pretty weak um, over the last week or so or what week or two. So I think it's been a little bit of a case of, you know, people selling into any news, um, which is, you know, a, a bit frustrating for us. We think it's a, you know, it's a great base and great start. It's very much just the start of the course, um, you know, at Crown Prince with, with plenty of growth to come. Thanks for that, Alex. Okay, so next one. Um, Ian has written a question. So you've announced the cutoff grade of 1.2 grams for underground and open cut combined. What is the open cut cutoff to say 100 metres in depth? So the 1.2 grams is uh, based on statistics, geostatistics, uh, and that that um, so, so that's our reporting cutoff. All of the ounces announced actually go into a pit. Now, when you optimise the resource, uh, it's it's you know more likely that the pit would go to about 135 metres below surface, and then we we can see. And an 
another ground you know prospect emerging below that but for the purpose of of, of reporting this and and uh, the dual code uh, all of these ounces go into the pit and so 1.2 grams was based on on just Wonderful. Another question from Ian. So what is the approximate cost to mine a bank cubic metre of rock around Mika? Uh, uh, well, it depends. So the any open pit mine, you're talking in a cost per tonne, and the cost per tonne of ore um, will depend on the strip ratio. So, you know, what we see here uh, is around... Twenty-five to thirty dollars per, per per ton of ore. Uh, now, in terms of bank cubic meter, I think it's around one dollar. Uh, sorry, about around two dollars or something like that per bank cubic meter. But that your know, bank cubic meters depends on um, you know to get to tons depends on density depends on lots of things. And so your your cost per ton depend will also depend on that. Plus Thank you, Alex. Just another one. So would around 11 to 1 strip be about right to 100 metres? Uh, to 135, it would be about 10 to 1. Wonderful. Uh, another one that's just come through. Uh, at what point in, in terms of gold ounces do you consider the resource to be mine ready? And do we have, have all of the least ready for mining approvals? Sure. So... Uh, it, it sits on a ground mining lease, uh, and the native title native title agreements are in place. So, what what would need to happen, you know, in a conceptual mining scenario from here would be a works approval and some environmental approvals. So, we do need to do uh, an environmental background survey. So, you start so you need two seasons, so an autumn and a spring season. Um, there's been previous mining in this area, uh, and there's been previous environmental studies done. So they have. So really, uh, works approval at the moment is taking about three months. So depending on how long those environmental uh, studies take, and, and we think we could probably fast track those given the previous activities here, um, we're looking at a three month uh, timeline to, to works approval. I'll, I'll, um, I'll add to that, sorry, answer just Jane, because uh, so, what, so what else makes us mine ready? Well, the grades certainly there, the economics look to us like they stack up. Um, you know, the I think, We've 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 reported this resource at one point two grams. There's probably mineralized material below that, um, you know, in any conceptual pit as well. You know, so but we see a sort of three point five plus gram open pit type material coming up. Thank you, Alex. We've got another question here from Stephen. Actually two two questions here. So what sort of top cuts have been applied and also what are the numbers uncut? Sure. So we, we do see, um, you know, volume variance effects at this deposit, um, you know, like many deposits in, in WA Gold, but, but this one in particular. So when, when we've done our metallurgical sampling uh, and our composite, some of the samples when we did a bench top style, you know, test work came back significantly, significantly higher uh, grade than the drill holes would suggest. So that's right. We don't, we don't take those, you know, that, that high grade component and smear it through the resource because <clears throat> it, it may be variable. So we take a conservative view and apply those top cuts. But you know, when you go mining, we believe that there'll be you know an overhaul, you know, due to what we see in other uh, bulk sample test work. So we've applied various top cuts in some areas, and it depends on geostatistics, but in some of the zones, 40 grams. In 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 the most the highest top cut we've got is 165 grams in a very continuous high grade ore body, um, but you know, it sort of varies is the answer from 40 grams to 165, depending on the geostats. Thanks for that, Alex. Just a couple of questions here, just on regional consolidation. Can you maybe tell us about what you're sort of seeing in the area? Well, so the, the gold sector M&A is definitely holding up. I mean, Red 5, Silver Lake, merger was announced earlier during the week, um, you know, and that lean ore area seems to be quite hot. We're, what we're saying, you know, in the market is that the producers are, you know, really benefiting from, uh, you know, a strong cash flow generation. So because the Aussie gold price uh, is so strong, and yet the explorers are being in this, you know, put in this unloved basket because they're relying on the capital markets and, and everyone's feeling a bit, a bit sanguine in that respect. So you know, eventually the producers, um, you know, start looking at the explorers 
um, and seeing them as, you know, a cheap way to grow ounces. So, it, you know, we do see, you know, it potentially being a year of consolidation in, in you know, in the gold sector. Um, let's see how that plays out. But, you know, certainly for our point of view, we're growing the resources as quickly as we can. Um, we're mine ready uh, and we're de-risking the asset in terms of, you know, metallurgy and geotech and hydrogeology. So, you know, they're all the things that, that you know, you, you need to do to put yourself in a strong position possible. Wonderful. Um, there's a question here just about um, whether Aura is considering a share consolidation. No. Okay. Um, well, Alex, that's actually all the questions that we have for today. But I think maybe just to, um, to to wrap things up, you know, what should shareholders be looking out for? So we're drilling at the moment. Um, you know, it's it's uh, going to be. 40 degrees today in Perth. I think it's 45 up at Mekas, so there'll be the drillers and the geos up there will be having fun. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're drilling. We are, you know, uh, looking to grow that resource. We'll have news out on metallurgy. So, you know, plenty of, plenty of uh, news flow coming. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for your time today. If you do have any other further questions, please feel free to reach out by the contact details, which can be found on our website. Uh, but we look forward to hosting you again next time. Thank you all. Thanks, John.